I mentioned earlier that Java, um, Google has a lot of domain knowledge about you know developing web apps. It, you know, uh, it actually implements a lot of this domain knowledge directly into the GWT API. One of the best examples I came across is Image Bundle. So, um, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of you, while developing sites, end up with a lot of tiny images. You might have a cross out here, a trash can to show a delete, maybe an arrow pointing, you know, to an update or something. So, you want these uh, images to load like as one image and then use CSS to position it. That can be quite a painful task for C. You have to get a designer to put all these images in an image. Then you have to get a CSS guy to position them correctly using CSS positioning. You have to make, all, make sure all the images are in the correct format and blah, blah, blah. So um, in GWT, there's something called an image bundle. You just create an image bundle. You add resources, which could be different files. You could have one, you know, one GIF file for you know, a, a, the trash can for the other smiley icon, you could have another file while compiling. And then when you're using it in your code, you just do image bundle dot uh, whatever name you've given the resource. So it's relatively easy to use it. So, and then when you finally, when finally GWT is compiled and loaded, uh, the compiler will actually take all these images, squish them together into one single image file and do all the CSS positioning for you. So finally, on your website, you're loading just one image file, as opposed to your browser having to load 20 files. That's just one of the things. The second thing I mentioned was tables. Uh, all the panels that I'm talking about, they're really great. I mean, most people wouldn't realize this, but you can lay out really complex things using just horizontal and vertical panels. There are many other panels. There are absolute panels. Yes, there are um, flow panels. They're just basically layout structures and um, once you lay your site out and if you actually look at the code later you might notice that it's a huge it's a complex uh, uh, collection of tables like a table inside a table kind of thing but it loads really fast much faster than if that same thing was in a div um, you know you'd use divs to create that structure so okay <clears throat> so the next part of my talk I'm gonna get into is uh, <clears throat> Google API's so um, Google has many APIs. For technically, you can call the App Engine backend an API. You can call the Android stuff an API. So um, that can get a little confusing. But it has two collections of APIs, <clears throat> specifically, that I'm going to talk about here. One is the Ajax API. The reason, um, um, OK, this is actually, um, this has another version to it. It's called the Data API. So the Ajax API is really great if you're going to be using a lot of Google functionality and you want to use a lot of Google services from JavaScript or from GWT. And uh, the data API that I'm going to get to later is usually a lot better if you want to use uh, the same functionality from your servlet, from the back end, or from an application. You might have an uh, you know, Android application or something and you want to you know, consume uh, calendar uh, events or you want to publish something to uh, um, you know, I don't know, Picasa, and you can use the data APIs for that. So that's how they're defined. So the Ajax APIs contain search, <clears throat> which is a standard search API you can use for, you know, whatever. And they have this really cool new API called the Social Web Search API. So it actually searches through pages for social, uh, for social uh, references. So um, it's kind of hard to explain, but if you like run it against a LinkedIn page, uh, then it would actually parse out everything and, and uh, list out all the friends on the page, or, you know, who's talking, who, what are the other social references. So um, it's pretty smart that way. You can find the social um, metadata that's embedded in web pages. So there's a, visual, visual, uh, sorry, there's a visualization API which is really good, which is used for um, all the school graphs in Google Finance or Analytics. Again, this is all JavaScript and Flash. And, and it's really good. It's one of the best graphing toolkit I've seen in a while. Then um, this is Maps, which everyone knows about. I don't know how many of you know about the Static Map API. This is something very cool. But uh, similarly, dynamic maps are, you know, when you go to maps or google.com, that's what you see. Static Map API is just a URL API where you can actually create any type of image of a map with, um, you can have embedded, um, 
you could have embedded uh, links, images, you could have a marker, you could have um, a, a pop-up window in it. You know, everything you can do using normal Maps or Google com except it would be in a single image file which is quite cool because you could actually embed that as an image link into I don't know an email or on a web page and you know and it would still work on devices that don't support JavaScript or something heavier it's actually a very powerful API and a lot of people don't know about it it's called the static maps API the language API I'm sure you're familiar with it allows you to detect languages which is extremely cool and then translate it to and then basically handle translations. So. Okay, then there's a Google Data API. The Google Data API is um, generally a collection of uh, libraries. So <clears throat> this is there's a, a PHP library, there's a, uh, there's Java library, there's JavaScript libraries, and uh, Python libraries. And uh, these are used in your applications or in your backend servlet code to connect and consume uh, Google services. So one of the most popular ones is the calendar, which uh, I know is used quite a bit, even by other Google applications. Then there's contacts, which I would say is the mm, least developed of the APIs, but it's still pretty useful. Docs, which you can like create docs, you can share them, you can set parameters, permissions, whatever. And um, Gmail, I guess uh, you guys know about Gmail, sorry. Um, okay, I think that's a typo, I meant Picasso, but sorry. But there is a Gmail API too, I just haven't got into it till today. Okay, so um, the data API requires authentication. So um, the JavaScript does too, but I mean, the uh, API, the best way to authenticate is OAuth, but auth sub is not bad too. Uh, a lot of their libraries actually have an auth sub uh, implementation in there, which makes it quite easy for you to use auth sub. But um, OAuth is something popular. I'm sure you guys know about it. Twitter uses it for pretty much all its um, Twitter uses it for pretty much all its um, external application integration. And um, I know there are a few more services that are you know working on using OAuth. So again, I mentioned uh, the libraries. That's what's available. And in the back end, libraries are just um, uh, just a wrapper that helps you uh, do a lot of the Google that use the Google Data APIs really easily. But uh, there is, but in the back end, uh, the Google Data API is pretty much an Atom. Um, it's implemented using Atom, the standard. It's an XML format and. Um, the schema that Google uses is called GData. That's what. Um, that's basically why they call the data APIs. So I'm going to get a little bit more into them because a lot of people, you know, aren't very familiar with them, and uh, they're relatively more complex than just doing this using, you know, simple JSON or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so yeah, how this Atom GData standard works is each. Um, each entity has its own um, URL. So for example, this one points to calendar. It says the default calendar of the logged in person, his own calendar is full. So it's just a way to refer to an entity. Sorry. Oops. OK. I'm just wondering, is this the? Yeah, this one that's showing you. Um, this is selected in Hydrogen. This is an older one. Is this the one you just copied from Naveen? Uh, no, this one we emailed us. Oh, after that, Naveen just copied something, right? So you didn't copy the new one? Uh, yeah, this is good. I'm fine. Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. There was a little mix up with the file. So, um, again, coming back to the data APIs. Um, I've put in an example of how uh, you would authenticate using JavaScript um, with the data API backend. So um, the JS API, you just embed the script tag which actually fetches a JavaScript um, part of their API structure. It's easy to load whatever API you need. For example, the Google data API can be loaded just doing google.load gdata.